The 2 1. Swinging a high fly ball. Deep left field. Kelnick back at the wall. It's gone! Hey, Oscar Hernandez drives this one deep left field. It's gone! You can take a deep breath, Mariner fans. He's on our team now. Hey, Oscar Jose Hernandez was recently acquired by the Seattle Mariners from the Toronto Blue Jays in exchange for relief pitcher Eric Swanson and minor league pitching prospect Adam Mako. And it was announced today by the Mariners that Hernandez will be switching from number 37 to number 35 for the 2023 season. But how do you get to this point? Teoscar signed as an international free agent with the Houston Astros in 2011 and later that year made his professional debut for the Dominican Summer League Astros at the age of 18. He spent the next couple years progressing through the low minor leagues, after which in 2014 he was promoted to the Corpus Christi Hooks of the AA Texas League. Jason's first pitch delivered at 750. Hit swing and a deep drive to center field, giving Chase's Levine, and this one is gone, a home run. The Oscar Hernandez hits a home run just to the left of straightaway center field, and that's how this one begins with a big bang for the hooks. Hernandez would be promoted to AAA in 2016. One pitch on the way, that's crushed to right center field. Long run for Lamar, he's not going to get this one as this one's onto the berm. A two-run homer for Teoscar Hernandez, and Fresno takes a two-to-nothing lead. After which, on August 12, 2016, the Astros promoted Hernandez to the major leagues. Teoscar Hernandez in his big league debut. How's that for a debut moment? His first career home run, well done, young man, by two strokes. He would play 41 games for the Astros in 2016, after which he started 2017 back in AAA. Then on April 25th, he was recalled to the majors, and in his first game back... Right center field, Teoscar Hernandez and Altuve, they collide! He would be placed on the 10-day injured list, and this would be his last game in an Astros uniform. As on July 31st, 2017, the Astros traded Hernandez and Nori Aoki to the Toronto Blue Jays in exchange for Francisco Liriano. And yes, this is that Astros team that went on to win the World Series and later become the Houston Astros. Hernandez played through August in AAA for the Blue Jays once he was healthy. High fly ball. Deep into the night, court back at the wall, jumps, and that ball is gone! Into the corner! And would be a September call-up for the Blue Jays. On September 10th, he hit his first home run as a Blue Jay. Deep center field, back goes Jones, looking up at the wall, and it's gone! Which also marked his first multi-home run game of his career. Castellanos, is this another one? Back he goes, he jumps, there it goes, number two! A five RBI day. To start his career through 2019, although he had quite a low batting average, he still managed to have a slightly above average OPS plus and managed to drive in some runs while batting at the bottom half of the order. Then in the shortened 2020 season, Teoscar went off and he started to crush the ball. One, two. Got a pitch to hit, and it's slammed into left center for a base hit. News that broke today of about a dozen positive COVID tests on the Marlins. They ask her, Hernandez hits it a long way to right center, and it's going to go. Her to give Baraki a clean inning as Hernandez drills another ball to deep right field, his second home run of the night. Teoscar would finish 2020 playing 50 games, ending with 16 home runs, 34 RBIs, a 289 batting average, and an OPS plus of 146, meaning that overall his bat was about 46% better than the average hitter. And with his 16 home runs through 50 games, he was on pace for 51.8 through 162 games. He would also place 11th in the AL in MVP voting and be one of three outfielders in the American League to win the Silver Slugger. Hernandez would start 2021 in the cleanup spot for the Blue Jays. And he got a pitch over the heart of the plate and he crushed it. Teoscar Hernandez with a monster home run. 
You could call 2020 his breakout year, but 2021 was even better. He would set career highs in hits, runs, home runs, RBIs, stolen bases, as well as batting average, as he'd go on to make his first All-Star game. He would also win his second career in back-to-back -back Silver Slugger Award. 2022 wasn't quite as big as 2021, but still a great year. He finished with a 267 batting average with 25 home runs, 77 RBIs, and an OPS plus of 127. And he's proven that he just mashes the ball. This one had an exit velocity of 114.1 with the distance of 461 feet. Into our broadcast. He's got our pitch com, I think, yeah. <laughs> that swing was so nice and easy. Nothing was forced. He saw it, he recognized it, he let it come to him, and then took a nice swing at that. And take a look at his baseball savant page. Four out of the past five years, he's been in the 91st or higher percentile for total barreled balls, the 82nd or higher percentile in all five years for barrel percentage, the 86th percentile or higher all five years for exit velocity, and also has been up there most of the years in hard hit percentage. Then add in the fact that he's been in the 84th or higher percentile in sprint speed since he entered the league, and that makes for a doubles machine. Here's his savant page from 2022. Red is good, blue is bad, and as you can see, he clearly strikes out quite a bit. He has a high whiff percentage, but average exit velocity, barrel percentage, max exit velocity, hard hit percentage, expected slugging, sprint speed, as well as arm strength is all there. But they did forget one category for him. Right down the middle. Say Oscar. 2-2, and it's driven to Alex Mayer tweeted the other day that Teoscar Hernandez, Julio Rodriguez, and Mike Trout were the only players to rank in the 95th percentile in a hard hit percentage, as well as the 80th percentile in sprint speed in 2022. Here's the Mariners general manager, Justin Hollander, on why they got Teoscar Hernandez. Because he hits the ball very, very, very hard. Um, we've had interest in Teo for a long time we actually got pretty close to a deal last spring training with the Blue Jays we've been having sort of an ongoing dialogue with them for a while he just fits he fits our lineup uh, we really did want to lengthen the lineup and expand the impact that we had up and down the lineup uh, he fits well on the field and every bit of research we've done says he'll fit well culturally in our clubhouse supposed to be a great teammate great human being uh, I think he'll fit well with our group. And then Jerry DePoto on the Mike Salk Show. Jerry, uh, congratulations. You guys got a deal done yesterday. How happy were you when it was finalized? Uh, pretty happy. You know, uh, Teoscar's been a guy that's uh, he's been on our radar for about a year now, and not the first time we have uh, inquired on him, but obviously this time we were able to uh, to get it done and, and bring him to Seattle. Really big impacts in, in our lineup. That's what the, you know, the his carrying tool is, is his back. You know, it's a big time power back for the middle of our lineup, which was a goal this offseason. Was he your top target for this offseason? Yes. You know, he, he was in terms of trade targets for sure, the guy that we had in our in our sights and didn't quite know if we'd be able to get there, but you know, what you've seen publicly with the, the Blue Jays' desire to get a little bit more left-handed was information that we had internally as well. And, and therefore, you know, we, we sought the, the match because he was the, the obvious uh, candidate with one year left of club control. And, and we feel like it's a huge get for us. How, how you figure out whether this guy and his wiring and his makeup and his personality will fit now within the culture and the foundation you have built how do you how do you go about deciphering that? You know that's that's part of what drew us to to Oscar is that over the course of uh, six years in the league, which is about you know, how long he has been, you know, five plus seasons of major league service, you, you develop a reputation, and when you're particularly in one place for a length of time, like he has been now in Toronto, you get a lot of feedback from around the league. And, you know, we have players that have played with Tasker. We have players that have longer standing relationships with him. We've always spoken highly of him. We also, the reputation, you know, he has a reputation as a pretty gregarious, affable guy, always happy and smiling. 
you know, a lot of the same traits that we see or, or have seen in Luis Castillo, some of the traits that we see in Julio Rodriguez. And uh, he was a guy that we not only wanted to, to bring to Seattle because of the potential bat impact, but because of who the person is and, and how we thought it could fit in our clubhouse. We can all see that Teoscar is a fantastic player on the field, but we can only imagine the impact that he'll have on the clubhouse. Joining in with Mr. Smiles, Julio Rodriguez, Mr. Good Vibes Only, A. Eugenio Suarez, Luis Castillo, and other players on the team that seem to have great energy. Teoscar is set to become a free agent after the 2023 season and headed into his age 30 season in the prime of his career, now seems to be the perfect time to add him to the Mariners long-term plan. Here's what Tapoto had to say about that possibility. In this case, I don't want to. I don't want to limit us to just the year. You know, we want to be open-minded to what happens as we move out into the future. Tasker is 30 years old. He'll play his 30-year-old season this year. That's uh, still in right in the middle of his prime. He is in terrific physical shape. Hits the bar ball as hard as anybody in baseball. He's an above-average runner. He can really throw. I mean, there are a lot of uh, a lot of elements to his game. That, that should age fairly well. He's a very athletic guy. So if there's an opportunity to do something beyond just the 2023 season, we're going to be open-minded to that. And additionally, you know, whether Jared takes that step forward or not, you do need guys on the flank with Julio. You know, we, we talked about the, the need for at least one and potentially two outfielders, and, and we still feel that way. You know, we, we wanted to create a rotation between outfield and DH, we feel like we're much closer now with uh, with JK, with Jesse Winker, Julio, and and Teoscar, with the function of you know Scott as Scott has referenced the scat backs, guys like Demo and Sam Haggerty. So uh, we are much more built out than we were before, but we want to be open minded, not just to to 2024 and beyond, but to to what we can do to help this team be a little bit more exciting. Having Julio and Teoscar in the same outfield makes them a top five outfield just with them alone. We'll see if the Mariners add another piece to the outfield, and surely there's got to be reinforcements coming at second base or maybe shortstop. All we know is Teoscar has a new profile picture and seems excited to join the team. Hey, what's up, Mariners fans? Uh, this is Teoscar Hernandez. I just wanted to let you know that I'm really excited about this trade, and I can't wait to see you guys on the field. Let's rise together. Thank you for watching, and if you made it this far, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel, give it a share, and I'll put a link here to my player profile series. All right, guys, goodbye, Zoni. Don't forget it. Stop it. Oh, the fast life, the fast living. They see the ambition, they know I'm past driven. Look, we are not the same, this is not a game. I be swerving through the city in and out of lanes. Yeah.